This is what we're gonna be building today. It's an AI image generation app using the OpenAI API and Bubble. So you're gonna have an image generation prompt area and you're also gonna have a results area. And we're gonna be using the Dolly2 API to create this. And even if you've never used an API before or you've never used Bubble before, I'm gonna build this with you from scratch, from start to finish. So you're gonna be able to do it by following along this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So now what we're gonna do is learn how to use the Dolly uh, image generation um, AI API through OpenAI. So uh, instead of using the GPT-3 text generation, we're gonna use the image generation. The first thing that you need to do in your Bubble app is in your Bubble API connector, um, so I'm just going to quickly go over uh, what we've already set up here uh, for our text generation because it's all the same for our image generation in, turn, in terms of our OpenAI API. So you need to create, um, if you don't already uh, add another API, if you don't have an API already, we have, um, we're going to name it OpenAI, uh, private key and header, so we have authorization. Go to your API key in uh, OpenAI, so personal. Uh, view your API, P API key, you add the word bearer, space, put a space, and then paste in your, your key, and you do that um, in both the development and key value, and then you add a shared header, which is this content-type application slash JSON. So once you've set up that with your OpenAI um, uh, API, we're going to go down, and we're basically going to say add another call, or add a call. And we're going to create a new call here for image generation. I'm going to walk through um, everything that's set up here. So the first thing we're going to do is name our call. So in this case, I'm naming it image generation dolly. We're going to use it as an action here. The data type is JSON. And then the, um, the uh, call is a post. And this is the URL. And I'll show you where you can copy this. So in the OpenAI uh, documentation here, you just need to go to images here on the left side, create image, and here we can get our um, image, uh, create image uh, URL call. So just go ahead and copy and paste that here. Um, and then we're gonna go down to our uh, parameters in the body. And here are the parameters. We're just gonna go ahead and copy that paste that in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll paste it. Uh, whoops. Make sure you actually just hit copy so you don't get those numbers. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paste it below. Um, I'll just go ahead and paste it here. Um, and here. And then what we need to do is add dynamic fields. So this is the prompt. Uh, and I'm going to name it prompt. The N, which is the number of images to generate. Mm, let's say N and size, I'm going to leave this um, set like this for now. Um, if we go to our documentation, we can say currently there's three sizes that they can be set to. So in theory, we could set this as an option set that users could choose from. Um, but in our case, let's just keep it at the default 1024 by 1024. And then you can see we, can ch we could choose the response format if we want. Um, but by default, it's going to return a URL for the image that it generates. Uh, so let's go back and let's go ahead and test this. So the prompt, let's go ahead and put a prompt in. And I just copy and pasted a prompt in here, which is a turtle swimming underwater expressionist painting. And, and let's create three. And I'm going to uncheck private so we can uh, pull that in from our app when users are entering in uh, their inputs. And um, then let's go ahead and uh, and either initialize or, or I'm going to say reinitialize because I've already tested this and it's going to connect. It's calling the API. Okay, cool. And here we have our returned values, which means that the API uh, worked correctly. So here, if I go and click show raw data, so here it's giving us three URLs. So why don't we go ahead and copy and paste one into a new tab. And here it is. It's loading up. And here we go. So here's our image that we created. One thing to note is, so I got this uh, prompt off another website. Uh, just keep in mind that sometimes it can be hard to write a prompt that gets the result that you want. So learning how to 
engineer prompts is kind of a skill in itself. So just keep that in mind if you test this out and your image didn't look very good. Uh, you just It just takes some practice to kind of learn how to write good prompts for image generation. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, just like for a text generation app, what we're gonna do with image generation is turn this uh, into something that users can interact with on our bubble app. So to do this, let's go ahead and go back to our designer. And what we wanna do, uh, this was the text generation app that we built, but let's go ahead and add a new page and let's call it image. And let's clone, actually, let's just create a brand new one. It's gonna be called image. And we have a blank page here. And let's go ahead and let's add a group in the middle. And then what I wanna do is go ahead under the image, under the page image here. What I'm gonna do is go to layout and the container, I'm gonna make it a column. I'm gonna go through the designing here uh, and kind of the formatting quickly because the main part of this tutorial is learning how to use the, uh, the Dolly API. So, and then the group uh, itself, I'm gonna call this container. I'm gonna make it a column. I'm gonna go ahead and add padding 20 on each side. And then I'm going to make it not fixed width, min width of zero. And that's it for now. So I have a container. Now what I'm gonna go ahead do and do is pull a text element in there and call it image generator. And let's go ahead and go to layout, uh, uncheck fixed width, min width is zero, bit width to content, min height is zero, body is H, let's say heading two. Okay, sounds good. And now what we wanna do is go ahead and add an input field. That's gonna be called um, uh, pr image prompt input, and I'll call it image prompt. And actually, why don't we, I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna go ahead and do a multi-line input instead of a regular input, in case we wanna do a longer uh, input here. So I'm gonna do uh, uncheck fix width, min width is zero, min height 100 is good. And placeholder, let's just say, write your prompt. Okay, cool. And now what I wanna do is, I'm just gonna add a little text element above. It's gonna say prompt. And let's do a min height of zero, uncheck fix width, fit width to content. Okay, I'm just gonna duplicate that, put it underneath real quick add a margin of 20 above, rename it to number of results, max of 10. Um, and then what I wanna do is go ahead and create an input. And this will be number of results, number, initial content. Why don't I just say two as initial content? and it's gonna be an integer content format. Set a range, min, max. I'm gonna say the maximum value is 10. And then I'm also gonna say the minimum value is one. Uh, and then let's go ahead and um, add a button. Make sure it's in that container. So, oops, we have a container. And then the button, this is gonna say generate image. It's gonna add 20, 10, 20 mar uh, pixels of margin on top there. It's gonna say generate image. And then under layout, not fixed width, zero, fit width to content. Okay, so this is coming along. We just have our basic, basic basically image generator with our prompt, number of results, generate image or images, either one. Maybe just say generate. Okay, great. So we have our prompt and now we need to create an area for responses. So I'm gonna go ahead and have a group. I'm gonna pull that uh, group down. And I do wanna make sure, oops, it's inside the container. So I'm gonna go ahead, there we go. And this is gonna be called the image response group. 
create a layout column not fixed width margin top of 20. I'm going to go ahead and remove the style out of order solid five roundness two width color black and again I'm going quickly here because like I said before the main purpose of this tutorial is the uh, functionality here. Let's just add some text inside and say results and make it an H a heading four layout not fixed width, min width zero, fit width to content, zero min height. This image response group, I'm gonna add 20 pixels of padding all around. Okay. And now what I wanna do on this image response group, we need to actually have a place to save the images uh, to the group so that the user can see them and we can display them on the app. So one thing we could do is save them to our database. That's one option. Um, but another option is saving it to this group and then letting the user later on, we could build functionality to have the user save uh, images to their database if they'd want. So there's different ways that you could build your app. Uh, this is just the way that I'm going to show you right now. So here, if we go up and add a custom state, it's going to be URL. The state type is a text and it's going to be a list, which means that we could display multiple URLs in our results. So that's like if we choose more than one image, it would be more than one uh, URL result. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to add a repeating group here under the results. And what I'm going to do is style it real quick. So I'm going to make it a column. I'm going to unchecked fixed width min height. I'm going to say, actually, let's just do 50 for now. So we see that. Uh, appearance, it is going to be text type of content. The data source is going to be uh, the um, image response groups URL, okay? Because that's where we're saving the images. We're going to not do a fixed number of rows, not do a min height of row, and one column. So we'll, we'll do one column for now. Okay, and now I'm gonna add a group inside of that repeating group. And this is going to be the image result group. And the content is going to be text here. And it's gonna be the current cells text. So I'm getting that text result. It's a list of texts that are going to be in this repeating group. And then this image group here, the result group is going to be a text content. We're pulling in the individual text URL. With the layout, I'm going to make this a column. No, uh, same thing we do with a lot of things in styling right now with bubble, uncheck, fix width, min height. Let's just say 100 for now. And then we're going to go ahead and have an image and pull that into that image result group. And what I want to do is have it be a dynamic image, insert dynamic data parent groups text, because that's the URL. Run mode uh, rendering, let's just say rescale for now. Layout, let's make it not fixed width, zero. Min height, let's say, let's just say 100 for now. And uncheck fit height to content. We might have to play around with those style settings a little bit to make sure it uh, shows up the way we want it to, but uh, this should overall work well. So here, this is gonna say generated image. And okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, set the workflow from when we press the generate button. So we want to go ahead and when we press generate image, start a workflow. We're going to do the open AI image generation for Dolly. The body prompt is going to be the um, input write your prompt, multi-line input, write your prompts value. The uh, number of results is going to be the number of results value. Because we called that number of results, you probably say input, number of results input value. And then here we go, so the results. So we're going to go ahead and go to um, 
uh, set state of an element. So we're going to set a state, which is that state we created here in that image response group. This is the state, and we're going to set the results as a list of URLs. OK, so the state we're setting is the image response group. The URL is the state. And what we're going to do is the result of step one, the data, each item's URL. So we're going to set the state. We're going to add a list of each item's URL to that uh, state. All right. And one thing to keep in mind, which is nice. OK, so now let's go back to our designer here. And let's click Preview. And now let's test it out. So I'm going to add that uh, uh, prompt that we were using before. And let's go ahead and add this prompt in. And let's do two results. And let's hit Generate and see what happens. All right, cool. So it actually did work. We have two results here, created two results. They're showing up a little bit small here in the center. So I want to work on the design a little bit. But it did work. So let's go work on the design, make sure it's showing the images um, larger, and then come back and try one more time. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our, uh, so we have a repeating group text. I'm also going to go ahead and edit the style here. So I basically removed the default style. I'm going to go ahead and have no separator and no border. So it's clear there. And then the image result, what we're going to do is have the min height. Let's just remove the min height, say fit height to content. Generated image, let's remove the min height and say fit height to content. And then let's make the generated image fixed width. So click, click that uh, fixed width button and make it 100%. And let's go ahead and try again and see how that works. So let's write a prompt, two results. Let's go ahead and click generate. And you would be able to add in some like loading screen or things like that as your image was gen generating. And here we go. So it looks like this might end up being a little bit better. It's going to be pretty big. But here we go. All right, so this is our result. Um, maybe a little bit too big, so we can work on that as well, make it uh, a little bit smaller there. But here we go. We have our full image, and we have our images that we just generated from AI. So let's do another one. Let's say I want to write, uh, create a piano in outer space um, uh, on the planet Mars. Let's go ahead and generate images for that prompt. All right, so there we go. We just generated that image. And here we go. We have a piano in outer space on Mars. So it did it for us. So very, very cool. Um, and yeah, let's just take a step back and think about what we built. So we connected our bubble app to OpenAI's Dolly API using the API connector. We created an input that users can use to write in a prompt and create uh, images, as um, and, uh, decide how many images they want to create. And then we created a way to sh display results. So we can see the images that were uh, created. And then we could even right click and we could download the image if we want as well. So very cool. So let's go back and change the styling a little bit of these results so we can see more results at once and view them more easily. So let's go back to our bubble app. Let's go to our repeating group, appearance. Let's go ahead and uncheck set a fixed number of columns. Um, let's say the min width of the column is 100. That works. And then scroll direction is going to be wrapped horizontally. I'm also going to go ahead and add a 10 gap for row and a 10 gap, gap for column. The image result group, what I'm going to go ahead and say is have that a min width of, let's say, 250, maybe 400. Actually, how about 350? How about that? And then the generated result, 100%. So let's see how that works. All right. So let's go back um, now to our app and refresh. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a prompt here. Um, I just copied this from uh, another source. And I'm going to go ahead and let's say let's do five results here. So it might take a little bit longer, but I'm going to go ahead and click Generate. 
All right, so we got our results. Uh, it's definitely a little bit easier to see because it's um, uh, they're a little bit smaller, but it's still a little bit bigger than I wanted. So I'm going to go back and let's go back to the bubble editor. And uh, let's see what I need to do to fix this. So maybe the image result group, the, let's have fixed width of 350 instead of min width of 350. And now let's go, so the image result group, I made that a fixed width here. So now let's go back, refresh, I'll try one more time, see how this turns out. So do four, generate, and I'm just gonna let that load real quick. Okay, awesome, so it worked. So now we can see we have four images uh, side by side, really cool um, AI generated images here, and we can see them a lot more easily because we can compare them side by side. And if we wanted to add on to this app, we could potentially add buttons and say, you know, I want to keep this one and this one. Um, potentially, I want to use this one and edit it. So there's a lot of things that we could do to work with these AI generated images. Great work. I hope you enjoyed the free YouTube tutorial. If you want to learn more about AI and no code, check out the link in the description or go to nocode.mba for the full course. And make sure you subscribe to No Code MBA on YouTube to check out uh, all of our future content and check out all of our past content as well. There's a lot of great no code tutorials already on YouTube here from No Code MBA. All right, thanks so much and hope to see you soon.